what's up guys now we got the nature view we're going to be chatting about estrogen's effect on the cardiovascular system and menopausal women so this is a topic that i get asked about a lot in my office about how estrogen and menopause affects lipids so we'll kind of mostly focus on that so this is not you know pros cons should you be on estrogen replacement therapy for menopausal that's the conversation best had with your you know physician your OBGYN, your primary care doctor um, but I'm going to talk about it from mostly a cardiovascular uh, standpoint. So we all know that cardiovascular disease is the number one thing that takes people out. Women, same as men, but it tends to be 10 years later in women. So while breast cancer is still something to be concerned about, heart disease is still the number one thing that's more likely to get you. Now, it's thought that estrogen has some cardiovascular protective effects. We'll get through those tonight. You know, much of it's related to the ability of estrogen to help the endothelial glycocalyx. So if you have a healthy endothelial function with your nitric oxide, you're less likely to develop plaque in the first place. So, you know, I'm not gonna go through too many trials. Um, I'm not necessarily a trial expert per se, uh, but people probably have heard of the world, uh, the Women's Health Initiative. That was one that was using uh, equine uh, formulations of hormone replacement therapy, and it showed, you know, some negative effects in these women. But major kind of downside of that trial was that it was used in people who are already 10 years post-menopause before they started the therapy. The atherosclerosis is already set in by that point. So much like I talk about in my practice, you know, prevent, don't, you know, stent, or you know, that's uh, some I remember from uh, Dr. Khan, I believe, is, you know, who has that saying, but, you know, um, you know, the pesto guest as well, is you want to go look for plaque in the arteries way before somebody has an event. And so maybe using estrogen replacement therapy, especially you know, a synthetic form later on, that's probably going to uh, cause a problem. But I did find a cardiovascular specific one that was quite interesting. I don't know uh, if they'll ever be able to recreate something like this uh, in the future, but uh, there was a trial called the ERA trial. It's the estrogen replacement and atherosclerosis trial. It's done in 309 women who had known coronary artery disease defined by having a plaque in one of their three coronary arteries of greater than 30%. How was this diagnosed? This was diagnosed with an invasive angiogram or cardiac catheterization. The women had a heart catheterization prior to estrogen therapy and then after estrogen therapy administration. Um, the trial is about 3.2 years long and they only received estrogen. I'm sorry, they received estrogen, but it was the equine form. So the one that's probably not as good for you, um, but they also did get a progesterone. But at the end of the 3.2 years, what did it actually show? It showed that there was no change in the luminal diameter. So the atherosclerosis did not change in the women receiving you know, equine estrogen and medroxyprogesterone. The Women's Health Initiative did have a sub-study that was looking at calcium scores. You've seen you guys talk about calcium scores in the past. You now calcium is supposed to be in your bones and teeth. It's not supposed to be in your arteries. So calcium in your arteries indicates that plaque is present. You've had a break in to the endothelium inflammation set in, and you're building up you know, plaques in the arteries. But in these women, there's over a thousand women who are just on estrogen, no progesterone. They're between the ages of 50 and 59 when the trial started. And the people who got estrogen, they basically had a calcium score of 83.1 versus the women who did not get estrogen of a score of 123.1. Now, is that clinically significant? May not be, but it does potentially show that there is a benefit of estrogen helping the endothelial function not allow plaque to build up further. So, you know, estrogen receptors are in many locations, but in the cardiovascular system, they're in the epithelial, uh, the endothelial cells, as well as the myocardial cells. And, you know, when you activate these cells, it increases endothelial progenitor cells. So more nitric oxide can be made because you have healthier endothelial cells and also decreases smooth muscle proliferation. What does that mean? So your artery is a hollow tube that's ringed with muscle. You know, you need the muscle to kind of hold it steady and it, you know, pulsates, you know, when the blood is going through it. But one of the hallmarks of atherosclerosis is that smooth muscle gets bigger and bigger. The artery positively remodels, it gets larger. So estrogen decreases that muscle growth. One of the major benefits from a liver standpoint is that estrogen prevents the LDL oxidation. So the LDL doesn't rust or get damaged to begin with, and then doesn't stick to the endothelium. If the LDL particles mostly the apoB containing particles don't stick to the endothelium, you're less likely to develop a plaque in the arteries. And I always see this on patients' panels, you know, well, premenopausal women will tend to have 
slightly higher HDLCs, which as if you've been watching me for a while, you know, isn't the best predictor of risk. Um, it's somewhat of a marker, you know, of how healthy your metabolism is, but you know, there are many people who have genetically very low HDLC and don't have atherosclerosis. So I don't put much faith in this a low HDLC per se being a big problem. You're mostly going to look at those ApoB containing particles. But women who have good levels of estrogen tend to have higher levels of HDLC and lower levels of LDLC. How does that happen? In the liver, the liver increases the VLDL and the ApoA1 production. The ApoA1 is a protein that sits on the outside of the HDL. So estrogen is cranking out more HDL particles um, and less ApoB containing particles. When a woman goes through menopause, the LDL tends to increase by about 15% or so. Um, now, is that clinically significant? Again, it's one of those test on guess scenarios. How healthy is the endothelium? You know, just looking at a lab marker doesn't always tell you what's going on with the cardiovascular system. So this is you know, patients in my office, the max pulse tells you how elastic the arteries are. If you have elastic springy arteries, probably have good uh, endothelial function. There's a test called an endopath. It's 15 minutes long, tells you how much nitric oxide to the percentage that your body can make when it's under stress. And this is, side note, one of the reasons people may have vasospastic or Prince Metals angina is that it's the endothelial dysfunction that is a result of the low estrogen state in menopausal women. Now, I don't necessarily recommend people go on estrogen therapy to treat vasospasms, but that may be the cause for it. It's also one of the reasons why um, people who have just hot flashes that may be associated with endothelial dysfunction. Um, so this isn't saying you have to go on estrogen therapy if you have hot flashes, but that's probably one of the better reasons why people would go on hormone replacement therapy is you go on it shortly as you're going through perimenopause and the menopause. That's where you're likely to get the major benefit, not 10 years after you've been in menopause and you're reintroducing estrogen into the, uh, into the system. <clears throat> so. What are some of the other things that happen when you're menopausal? Well, when estrogen levels go down, the LDL goes up, the HDL goes down, and your glucose intolerance increases. So you're more likely to become insulin resistant, more likely to become pre-diabetic. Estrogen also can have an effect on lipoprotein A. I've done talks on this in the past. I've never prescribed or recommended a patient go talk to a hormone replacement doctor to start estrogen therapy if they have high LPLA, but one of the probably reasons why it might affect LPLA is they don't really know exactly how LPLA gets cleared from the system. LDL gets cleared from the system from an LDL receptor. So on the outside of your liver, you have this like little catcher's mitt that when the particles go by, it catches it, brings it into the liver. That LPA particle might be able to kind of jam its way into that LDL particle. And the way estrogen works is it helps keep that LDL receptor out longer. It upregulates the production of them. Side note, how do statins really work for lipid lowering? Yes, it lowers you know, cholesterol output from the liver, but then the liver basically is low on cholesterol, so it upregulates its LDL receptor so that it can grab the particles from the bloodstream and bring the cholesterol back into the liver. So it's all about that LDL receptor and how functioning it is. Some of the other side note stuff that I've noticed uh, when I was reading up today on uh, other benefits of estrogen and the cardiovascular system, um, I saw Dr. Lyon log on. Yeah, it definitely helps you maintain muscle mass. You know, it keeps your arteries elastic. Again, it helps with that smooth muscle with relaxation, dilates the small blood vessels. It also prevents the blood from being very sticky or the platelets from sticking. So that gel coat that lines your arteries, that glycocalyx, there's all these different clotting factors in there. If it gets damaged, so think of like the little hairs on the bottom of a you know, riverbed, if those things get damaged, those clotting factors get released. So if that gene keeps that gel coat healthy, less clotting factors get released. Uh, estrogen is a natural blood pressure agent, essentially. It acts like a calcium channel blocker, again, causing the smooth muscles to relax. And previously I did talk about it, prevents the LDL from oxidizing. So if your LDL doesn't get oxidized, it doesn't tend to get modified and stuck in the artery walls and build up further plaque. And one other thing that I see, you know, it does potentially uh, lower homocysteine, Homocysteine is an amino acid that when it's really high will have an effect on nitric oxide. Homocysteine should get converted down into um, methionine, um, which doesn't affect nitric oxide. So again, it probably goes back to estrogen is beneficial for nitric oxide production. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys tonight about you know, estrogen and the cardiovascular system. I see a few questions popping up in here. I'll answer those in just a moment. 
Um, next week, I'm gonna do a chat about the Clearly scan. I'm getting more requests about that in my office. Um, I've had the scan done myself a few months ago. And in October, I'm actually gonna be traveling to an event down in Florida to talk to a group of 40, 50 guys who are interested in this type of technology to screen them up, to find cardiovascular disease at one of the earliest stages, you know, when arteries are just starting to get thickened before they develop severe plaque in their arteries and before they have symptoms. Um, so I've previously done a live about what the experience is like, what it is to go through the scan. Next week, I'll kind of go through a demo report, what the results look like, and potentially what some of the options are when you see, you know, is it soft plaque, is it hard plaque, and especially if it's the soft, you know, low density plaque, that's the necrotic plaque that's much more likely to rupture and cause events. So I'll go over the clearly scan next Monday, six o'clock central time. Um, well, let's see what, uh, what questions we got here. So somebody's asking, can they get the same blood test um, that I'm recommending here? Yes, you know, I you know, work with patients through you know, all the states. You know, if I don't have a license in your state, I can't necessarily prescribe you prescription medications in that area, but I can at least help you get the right lab work. And then maybe potentially you'd have to work with your local doctor if there's something that you need to get prescribed. But if you're interested in that kind of uh, consultation, uh, you can go to my website, it's drtwyman.com. There's a you know, schedule with me type of link. You know, you can set up a Zoom call, we can chat, make sure our practice is right for you. All right. So this is a question I don't know the answer to, but you know, will, will high estrogen foods help those or 10 years post menopause? Um, unknown. Yeah, it's one of those you know, test on guess scenarios. You know, what are your blood levels of you know, estrogens and progesterone and testosterone and cortisol, it all, it's all interactive. So. All right, guys. Well, that's what I wanted to share. If you have any uh, feedback, just drop them in the comments. Um, and then this video will be up on my live and like uh, archives in just a minute. And I know some of you guys are going to be watching this later. This will go up on YouTube in a day or two. So have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next time.